And I'm live with Haley and RTX Resembler. So I'm going to include in that Cozy INTJ and Socionics. I live for you, Santa Land. So we know what we're talking about here. And then we've got Santa here, who knows quite a bit about the TI Plus. And um, we'll get into that later. Type Cozy Counselor and also Socionics, IEI, Intuitive Ethical Introvert, the lyric. And these are some of the slides we're going to go through there. It's focused. So we're going to go through the first one we're going to go to here. And so in terms of here, so we've got the, and then we've got a little bit of Dario here, what Dario wrote about the creative function, what he called the sixth function. And we'll do that at the end if we have time. So the first one to look at is, so today we are doing Model G. And uh, as you can see, the structure there. Now, is it in the other, now the next graphic here, is focused on this so we have a situation where we have something which is optimum energy because it's not over it's not overindulged because we tend to overindulge our dominant functions and our auxiliary functions and so Sally you could probably back me up by saying that yes Ben you overindulge your TI and your NE and Haley can probably <laughs> back me up on that as well um, What's your NE? <laughs> pardon? <laughs> Mostly your any. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and so the creative, so the idea here is this works in conjunction with the first function. It helps implement it. And I'm going to give an easier example to understand uh, later on. I'll just say the externalities. So this is um, directed towards society. And now we've got some interesting sounds in the background. And I personally just find it funny. <laughs> Um, so externalities, people can read that there. So the idea here being, and Dario can sort of back up Victor on this, that introverts have an overall comfort with all of their introverted processes. And even to say a moderate degree. So in the case of INTJ, they have a moderate comfort with FI and SI. And Sally would have moderate comfort with SI and TI um, because it's like it, they're all pretty much they all used a lot within the introverted attitude and so D Dario reported that at the back of his book eight keys to self-leadership and it sort of backs up Victor's idea and for Victor Victor very much is a Jungian so for him introversion extroversion is very important so I'm gonna just go to this bit here so execution of things in the first one. Uh, and I'm going to give you an example in a moment of ESFP, how they use FE to bring attention upon themselves, because that's what they want. They want to be the center of attention and entertain people. So they're going to be using extroverted feeling in order to um, get to that end or in more precise terms they are very expressive people but they're not doing it for the sake of ha uh, Sana's dreaded word harmony they're doing it for the sake of to bring attention from themselves and to entertain other people and when they entertain other people that makes them feel good um Beeb archetype is the senex uh people can i'll just zoom in that people can uh in fact, I'll go with the other one. Really as best get to get to the example, but I am going to go through these in order. And I'm going to... And people can pause this. Because this is some of the research that... That I've ever shown. Yeah, because I looked at the brain images, so people can pause that. Read it themselves later on. Uh, this will make more sense, folks, when we get on to the next one. So now I can talk about the, the uh, creative function in general. This is a powerful, unconscious, not unconscious, unvalued function. So all of these ES types in the MBTI code, all the sensory extroverts, they're all good at extroverted sensor. And it makes sense. They're sensing types and they're extroverts. So, you know, you know, so they're out in the world, they're directed towards objects. 
That makes sense that they're going to be good at extrovert set, and I can give you proof of that with uh, ESFJ and ESTJ. Even though they value um, SI, if you look at their actions, they can use emotional pressure uh, ESFJ. And in fact, in the next slide, Victor gives an example of that. Because I asked him how did they use it, and he actually says it here. ESE's goal in the Socion is to engage people to new activities by overcoming their indifference <laughs> through their um, overcoming their indifference through a little bit of force, a little bit of emotional pressure, maybe. And they can certainly come through with their children. They can use it if their children disappoint them or show them up in front of uh, their friends. Then they will bring the pressure on them. Bradley can agree with me on that point. So yeah, ESTJs use the extroverted sensor to enforce the rules. So people can see these other things there. Uh, NE in ENTJs and ENFJs. People can read that. Spot opportunities, explain. I always read through this a little bit because sometimes people watch this on a mobile device. Uh, IN types are good at NI. Even INTP and INFP. So that's LII and EII, usually in socionics, can see the logical or ethical consequences. The downside of this is that it inhibits SE, because SE is, according to Dario Nardi, immersing yourself in the present context. Since seeing the consequences of those actions can inhibit you from responding naturally in context. Um, or even reading the context and taking charge of the context and reading the power levels. I've just been pinged, but I don't know who by. I will close that pinger down. Right, ISXX types are good at SI, e.g. ISFP and ISDP have very active occipital lobes and have good visual uh, memories. Uh, EXTX types are good at TE, e.g. ENTP and ESTP can apply themselves in business and get stuff done. Sana. You can back me up on this. Was your father able to get stuff done well? Yes. Yeah. ENTP preferences. If he wants to. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, EXXF. So, EXFX. Types are good at FE. E.g., ESFP can use FE to enact their performer role in life. Even if not a lot of professional performer, they like to draw attention upon themselves. Uh, in order to entertain people. Uh, ENFP can use FE to help make people follow their course. Or, and basically, you, you get it a lot with ENFPs, where their NE is really expressive, more expressive than the NE and ENTP. Uh, IXTX types are good at TI. And, and Carol, Carol described it as INTJs are good at those thinky thoughts too. So she, she described the TI thoughts as thinky thoughts. Uh, INTJ and ICJ can find logical faults in arguments. Not only that, they can quite frequently um, identify as Enneagram type 5 or have Enneagram type 5 in their tri-type. Uh, IXFX types are good at FI, e.g. INFJ and ISFJ. So SCI and II and Socionica are good at one-on-one -on -one relations. So you'd say as the counselor in the case of IFJ and covertly guiding the ethics, covertly guiding the ethics of the FI polar duels, ENTP and the SDP. Because NI is so strong in, I in INTP, I now call INTP TINX. And because TIN is so strong in INTJ, I call INTJ NITX. Right, I've been pinged again. I'm going to find out who's pinging me. And I'm going to close the pinging thing down. Right. I've been pinged. I'm going to get back to this. So where are we? Yeah, so that's gone through the creative function. Now we're going to... And here's a bit about how Victor sees it being used in the Alpha Quadra. So, yeah, so we've got here for EMTP, intuition of opportunities, NE, with pragmatic logic, TE. Right, so this is, so this is actually taken off one of Victor's YouTube channels. So, these are not my words. 
uh, you can't, I can't be accused of making them up. Yeah, innovative, innovative actions. You think that's fair of your father, Sana? Innovative actions. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what kind of situations that would apply to. Okay, fair enough. Right, okay. Bold ideas, inventions. So people can pause that and read it. And if you're on a mobile device, you know what? You, pinch and zoom, pinch and zoom. We're going to move forward. Oh, yes, this is the bit I wrote about the dark side of uh, the functions. Uh, so, my, so what I've got here, uh, oh, yeah. The dark side of creative shadow. It's because the creative function is hard for the person to see, e.g. this INTP fish doesn't realize it's wet with NI. So I'm thinking here that sometimes ESCJs and ESFJs can, be, can become overbearing due to their creative SE. And I've heard this quite a bit from people with ESFJ parents who, when they're less healthy, it's almost like the two go into eight, but in, a, in an unhealthy way. Uh, and then ENTJ and ENFJ being misguided by their creative NE. That's fair enough. Uh, Hitler. <laughs> right. Uh, not all Hitler. Uh, uh, IJs, IPs. So IJs, I little Js in, in sociolics. I big P and MBTI. If we assume that they those types correspond, which is a big assumption, INTP and INFP can become logocentric with NI conviction. So INTPs and INF believes, INFPs believe in reason and that they can get to the truth or know the truth. Both types vary into philosophy. So logocentric is sort of like too much focused on, they don't see don't really see many limits to reason and they believe they can really get at the truth with it. ISFP and ISTP can be called unstable in move with creative shadow SI. I think Kersey wrote about ISTPs getting angry and you can think of ISFP temperamental artist and their subjective vision. Now this is getting more, this is not the socioeconomic, when it's doing these two types, these are for the, um, the Kersey Verons Nardi types and MBTI types for those because they don't correspond to so science types. So EPs. So again, when their TE is used in, I would say, in an unhealthy way, ENTP and ESTP can become selfish about money when they go wrong, overly materialistic due to creative shadow TE. Or at least we can, it might not be due to that, but when I see that, I'm putting it in that category. Right, ESFP and ENFP can become manipulated or manipulative due to FE shadow. Kersey wrote about ESFP as being vulnerable to seduction, but I think they are also good seducers themselves, good people skills. So the FE seems to fit the creative shadow idea that it can go both ways, but it's usually positive. Uh, I, oh, I should have put I little P's there, uh, IJs. ICJ and ITJ become rigid and OCD. Um, not you, Haley. <laughs> But they can do when they go unhealthy, I reckon. ISFJ and INFJ become codependent when FI goes wrong in them, get taken advantage of by their ENTP and ESTP jewels. All right, I mean, that's a possibility. What did you reckon to that, Sana? Or is that going too far? Oh, I, I definitely have, yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to get on to something that is this is everybody can see the creative function here in all. Of these 16 sociotypes so people can pause that and look in but the one we're going to look in today is this one here niti but we're also going to look at the dual se uh, sefx so you're probably thinking why are we looking at esfp because it's easiest to show you in this example because i can show you the creative fe here and then i can show you the things that kersey wrote that are very similar to this so oh, that's on screen. You can both see that. So, Sarah, you've, uh, I'll ask you first, and then I'll ask Hayley, because I don't know how many ESFPs she's known. Uh, have you known many ESFP people, Sarah? I wouldn't say many. I only need one. <laughs> depends on what you're going to ask. Like, depends well, do you think on this fits them? the question? Those things in that um, grayed out FE box.
I don't know if you've known any, Olive. I I think I think it applies. Yeah, so you can you can say yes. I can see how they're exp emotionally expressive. Uh, Haley, yeah, have you? For sure. Yeah, Haley, have you uh, encountered men? Have you known any ESFPs? Haley, no. Okay, she's giving me the finger wag. Oh, <laughs> can't turn audio on. Okay, probably. Okay, fair enough. Right. So, so you can see it's right there, expressive with emotions. And, I'll, and I'm, what I'm going to do is prove here is that this is was noticed by Kersey because he wasn't using functions. And so these are little samples of things from uh, the profile, which you can see these little squares next to it. So these are just little bits of bits that I would say sound a lot like extroverted feeling. And also a lot of these things in that green box uh, could be things that could you would say are true of ESFJ as well. Love working with people and are outstanding at public relations. Pleasing others as a performer. Well, that's not, but it's still pleasing others for others. Stimulating those around them. Radiate warmth. Lift others' spirits. Charming them. Communal in outlook. Emotionally expressive. Intent on pleasing everybody. Sound like Effie? Sana? Um, well, yeah, some of it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Even the bitch, the, even the kind of Effie you don't like. <laughs> what was that? Communal and Outlook. You probably don't, oh, I don't like that kind of Effie. No, it's more like the pleasing everybody. Yeah. It's, it's uh, unhealthy. Yeah, but they're sort of doing it, they're pleasing others, but in a way, but it's, it's, that's the means. The ends, these are the ends of the, uh, this mm -hmm. is where temperament comes in. Their yeah. ends are different from the ends of the ESFJ. Their ends are, by entertaining others, that makes them feel good. And Jeff has convinced me of like the positive, it's, it's, because usually when they see somebody who's, who's bringing attention on themselves, they think of that person negatively, but they just like the attention. Because it makes them, you know, it makes them feel wanted and valued, and so they they will be using that in order to bring the attention upon themselves. And you can have also have these traits here. And Jeff would say that kindness for him is an instinct, whereas the S G the S F J S might see it more as a duty. Also, they'll feel in it as well on the inside to be kind, but they'll also see it as a duty. And so these are these, like I said, these are the goals of the artisans. These these are the ends. This is the means. Uh, I'm just gonna just quickly show you the bits that I've highlighted in pink for that to me sound FE-ish. That that sort of like a getting at the creative FE in the ESFP that they use to achieve their artisan ends. So we've got natural performance, social interest, stimulating those around them, charming, radiate, lift up the spirits, entertain others. Outgoing, expressive, pleasing others as a performer. And then here we go. They love the excitement of playing to an audience and they try to generate a sense of showtime wherever they are. Again, expressive, lively, conversationalists. Um, jokes and stories, uh, be merry. Uh, Got here. Emotionally expressive, affectionate people, virtually unable to hide their feelings nor hold their tongue. With their emotions close to the surface, their heart forever on their sleeve. Bent on pleasing everybody. Ooh, promiscuous. And then the last one. So this is just to show that so this is not a valued function, but they are showing a lot of FE behavior. Uh, go along with the classroom agenda in a friendly way. Uh, if they agree with it. To a certain extent, entertaining people in the limelight, people jobs. Uh, oh, yeah, even, and then this is where, and then, then this is an example of Kersey then goes beyond the stereotypes and talks about the kind of jobs that they can do other than the, than the stereotyped performer. And so there he's saying things like here about estate agents and things like that. Uh, 
working with people, outstanding at public relations, sociability, adaptability, sociable, filled with people, having a good time. That could also apply to ESFJ. Generally festive atmosphere, family problems won't be allowed to. There we go. That's Anders. So you can see loads of FE in this profile. So the creative function is definitely a powerful function, even when it's not um, valued in itself. So this is a simple version. Okay, okay, but you can hear me now. Um, so we've got this TI going on there. Dario calls this the sixth function, and that's because of the relationship to the Beeb model. So a very powerful function here that works together with the NI. So for instance, I would imagine that when Haley's doing her research on hypertrophy, she's doing the analysis, she's using the TI there. But she's not using the TI for its own sake, of theories for theories' sakes. It's theories for a practical objective with a purpose. She's not losing it the way I use it. Um, she's using it for something that makes more sense. Right, and if you want to see more Dario in this video, there you go, Haley. <laughs> there's the um, there's the there's the thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> it's just a okay. So the phone just disappeared. What what disappeared? Her phone connection. Uh she'll probably be back. Uh, he said to reset. So this is. So if people want to see more about Dario. Because this is also this because um, we talk about this TI function because that Dario is very interested in what he calls the sixth function and we're going to look at that later on right so now we can get on to after having proved how strong the function can be I'm now going to go through the TI plus and if Haley can't say anything well she can at least nod on certain bullet points when we go through it <laughs> and I'm gonna put this in the uh, the middle there okay so okay so these two work as a block social mission block these two are working together hand in hand uh you could almost say these are the ends so the goal definition this is the imp so this is used in order to achieve these th i would say the goals are pretty much set by the valued functions uh, and then the stronger unvalued functions are used to achieve it well especially the creative one anyway We've shown that with the FE. So here on the TI Plus, let me just see that I'm there. Right, when Haley's, I'm just going to go through the, and this is where I can ask you, Sam, about the, the TI Plus. Right. Right, so, and I'll go into more about Victor getting his digs in against the TI Plus and other schools of socionics. And I just love the self indulgence there. <laughs> um, so there we go. Um, I'll read it out in case people have got on a mobile device. Logic of uniform structure, securing the structure that has proven to work while considering all of the structures incorrect. Uh, I'll just ask you that bit, Sal. So is that sure of the or of the of the the TI plus people that you know? The uh, the first part. Yeah. That yes. Is yeah other structures but incorrect this structure's the one that works and is fantastic yeah. rationalizing one and only one right decision stubbornly following your principles are they stubborn Senna? or maybe you don't want to say in public <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> right uh thorough reading of directions or drafts Linear either or way of um, she's back way of thinking. This is the logic. Look, look at this, and then he puts a dig in. That is the logic of information socionics as well as the structural logic of LSI. So, information socionics is model A with all of its information metabolism. He's getting his digs in there, <laughs> <laughs> and then I've put here that LSI is um different from ISTP in MBTI Kersey and Barons and it resembles more the ISTJ she's back again <laughs> twice we can hear you we can hear you oh my gosh <laughs> but all these all these things make the hangout more entertaining in my view 
Uh, this, so the way of thinking, the logic of information science as well as should you like uh, aggress. Uh, anyway, so I said there, you can see there in purple. So I'll ask you there, Haley, if you have a look at this uh, plus L, is that how you think? Are you stubborn as AF when it comes to thinking? And Wait, well, run that by me one more time, please. Yeah, you know this bit here where it says logic of uniform structure. Does that fit you? That description. Yeah, I would say so. Ooh. <laughs> right, and then that bit. Um, you gone. Um. Well, no. I, it's just uh, my my. Uh, picture on the screen keeps jumping back and forth so i need to figure out what's going on I oh apologize. right if you click on if if you're on 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 the laptop you can click on my square and then it will yeah. stay on that i'm trying to it's it seems like my laptop and my phone have both started freezing like crazy and i don't understand what's going on so i'm doing my best here but um, okay that's fair enough the little bit I could read from that, it, it sounds pretty accurate. Right. What I'll do is I'll just I'll just read it out. Uh, I'll read it out again for folks. Securing the future that has proven to work while considering all other structures incorrect, rationalizing one and only one right decision, stubbornly following your principles, thorough reading of directions or graphs. Sorry, drafts, linear either or way of thinking. That is the logic. And then puts his dig in about model A. Right, uh, and then this is how I think logic of fractal structure by fractal, I mean being fragmented and scalable. That's the kind of logic that can see order and chaos and allows describing the same object in multiple ways. The logic of contradictions and paradoxes, multi dimensional polymorphic logic, relaxed and or alternatives. This is the logic of synergistic socionics, i.e., his socionics. And the kind of structural logic characteristic for LII. Because basically, his socio it's well, basically it's all Victor. I mean, it's nobody else in his ill. It's just it's just Victor. Um, I mean, um, so there we go. People can see there, and the similar now we're gonna go to the bullet points. Now that Haley is here, so it was worth it doing it in this INTP way of like showing the principles first. Okay, I'll, I'll think that's okay. I can actually... Right, okay, here we go. So the short definition, a function that shows us calm, cool-headed, and pedantic behavior. Right, so we're going to go to... Oh, actually, that's, that's, that's perfect. Right, so can you see that at the moment, Haley? number one? Yes. And I'll read it out to those people on a mobile device. Work slowly but conscientiously, paying close attention to detail. Sounds accurate. Uh, could you give us an example of of uh, instances where this happens? Like you paying close attention to detail. Well, um, I mean, I don't mean to sound strange here, but I mean, I feel like I do that with just about everything. I mean, uh -huh. things are there for a reason. So why should you overlook things or read them quickly? I mean, I mean. I feel like this is just self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, and it might also explain why this is like one of the only reasons you got a sensing score from like one or two answers when you did the MBTI step one. Otherwise, you would have got a perfect INTJ score because you've got 100% I, 100% T, 100% J. And it was just those two, I think you gave two answers that were the sensing answer. And that was probably to do with this about the about the detail, but it's detail from more of a TE point of view, I suppose. Well, I mean, if I give an example of things that I'm reading, um, like out of scientific journals, yep. everything is there for a reason. And so there have been so many instances where there will be like a little bit of text underneath the picture off to the side of the page. And if I'm not looking, like I have to make myself look for everything because it'll be that little bit of information that'll just like set me off and, and I'll be like, wow, you know, that I, I didn't even think about that. And that the little details really can make a big difference in, in bringing the whole picture together. Right, there we go. A little bit of NE there as well that you can get in the INTJ. Uh, wanting to connect things and get it in a big picture. Right, uh, and here we go. Number two, tries to calculate the possible outcomes 
Uh, I'll also, wait a minute, I'll also ask Sana, the INTJ people that you know or resemble that anyway, do they do that thing as well in number one? About? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So number two for Haley tries to calculate the possible outcomes in advance while striving to optimize the processes within a system and eliminate all the defects. Well, this all only pertains to what I care about with yeah. things that, I mean, I, I have to care about what I'm doing. I, I'm not just sitting around just, you know, trying to put a, Pro, a program together just for the fun of it. I would never do that just because I don't care. Um, but for the things that I, I desperately want to solve, um, I wouldn't say that I'm consciously trying to do it for fun. It's just that I, I want the end result. I want I want to figure it out. And so I feel like I just naturally do this. And uh, speaking diplomatically, a significant person in your life also has fits this type and is one on one and two very um fitting of them as well yes <laughs> <laughs> especially number two maybe yes yeah. <laughs> very much so and maybe number three has the mind of a programmer yeah well, i'd say yes but i ask someone to define this yeah that, that yeah i think but you're right there Haley. so i'll ask i'll ask Sano about now about those two so two and three is that does that fit the INTJ resemblers that you know as well? Well, one of them is LSI, so yeah, exactly. obviously yeah. it's gonna, yeah, you know, be very obvious. Um, I I would say so, very much about optimizing. Yeah. But the third one, I I would also like to know what programmer mind of a programmer means. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, I think. Basically, it seems to be a sort of a, I would say, an example of number two. Mm, okay. I w I, that's how I would interpret it. Uh, because, see, I don't know much about programming. The perfect person to ask this would be Wojtek. And, uh, uh, I mean, I, I know what the people I know that are programmers are yeah. like, so... I mean, some of them are, are INTJ. Yeah. I don't know about ILI, though. Yeah, okay. And then we've got here, uh, number uh, for Haley, prone to accumulation and analysis of information in various spheres of knowledge. I would disagree with the last part of that. Just because, like how I said earlier, if it's something I don't care about, I'm not going to actively pursue it. But. So within a certain sphere of knowledge say within hypertrophy yeah absolutely <laughs> you, you might you might be in the, you might be in the top 100 or well, certainly maybe even the top 10 of amateur um people looking into the subject of that because you do read the phd studies on it and really go into it so Haley, did you do your did you finish your graphic of the big ass cell no, I did not. <laughs> Just because it is so frustrating when you read a, a myriad of journals and just throughout they will say, and this area needs more further study to be further understood. So, I mean, I, I can't put something together that's not certain. I mean, I just have a big, um, like a big piece of paper saying not yet understood needs more, needs further research. So... And I'll just explain for people that when we mean big ass cell, it's like Haley was working on this big drawing with all of the metabolic processes in pertaining to um, put, uh, uh, hypertrophy. So, um, yeah. so we're going to. Uh, so I'll ask number four to Sana then. Is that uh, true of the. Now, as you said, one of them's LSI, but maybe scores as INTJ in. in well, TI. Uh, I know an ILI that fits yeah. that completely. Right, okay. Entirely, so. Okay, so we'll, we'll concentrate on the ILI. Um, and, so, and does he actually, and how many spheres of knowledge does this ILI resembling person have? I can possibly begin to count. Ooh. Because <laughs> usually the stereotype is that they have fewer spheres of knowledge than, say, the NE. Well, yeah, he's he's going to have those, and then he's going to have multiple different levels under that. Right, so 
Um, I'll ask, ask yes, you, Haley, about the significant ILI in your life. Does he um, have, concentrate on one sphere, or does he have other spheres of knowledge? Um, you know, he's very much like like I am. He like. has one particular area that he's like. He, okay, you know how you and I joke about how um, you and I like the INTP is a mile wide and an inch deep, and the INTJ <laughs> an inch wide and a mile deep. That's just yeah. how he, he is. Yeah, you certainly latched onto that uh, expression and uh, I thought that was, that was great. <laughs> and used it to get at, get at me and say, Ben, this is an example of you being a mile wide. <laughs> and, <he's deep. laughs> right. and then we've got hair number five. Uh, I'll ask you, um, in the ILI's area of expertise can be particularly meticulous, even pedantic. I think that's maybe true of you, Haley. Did you say meticulous well, and pedantic? Well, honestly, I feel like this is a waste of space because it's it's rewriting what number one is, has already <laughs> written. I mean, yeah, you're you're you're. This is this is how Haley comes through. Like she really shows her type when we go through the profiles and becomes the critic, which is what Victor calls <laughs> ILI. But yeah, uh, paying close attention to detail. Yes, conscientiously. Uh, Meticulous, yes, meticulous with conscientious, naive, and pedantic. Close the thing, yep. There we go. Uh, so is that true of the ILI that you know as well? Uh, wait a minute, yeah. I'll ask you, hey, is that that's true of your ILI person that you know about uh, them being meticulous and pedantic? Um, yeah, I think the, this, this is all very defining, right? Okay, uh. But also, a lot of these things might also be true of LSI as well. So that's yes, nice. some of them are. Some yep. of them are slightly different. Mm. Ah, 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 I'm interested. How would they be different between LSI and ILI? Well, the, um, the LSI is, has more of a... Um, um, he's more interested in just having a good time ah. instead of just uh, diving deeply into a book while alone he'll do that but then he's, he's it's kind of it's not as extreme that sounds a little bit artisan -y to me <laughs> Anna, uh, artisan points there could well, be hey, we're comparing to an ili everybody's going to be artisan <laughs> compared to that <laughs> well yeah, they can get their thing on dario's exploring his extroverted sense um so we've got here a good at debugging organizational systems uh, well, unless you're actually in that setting, you're not really going to be doing it. So I don't know if that applies. So, I mean, Haley's not really been in that setting. Uh, I don't know if the ILI that you know, Sano, is in that setting where he would be debugging. Yeah, I don't know if he wants to. He probably but, could if he wanted to. The LSI, on the other hand, definitely, definitely is good at that. Right. Now, you know what's interesting? Because he, because I've been reading Personology, which is like his most INTP book, and I have to concentrate when I'm, and it gives me a headache, so it's a tough book. But he was writing good stuff about adaptive enterprises, about how you can have the similarities between the, S, the MBTI SDPs and NTJs in like rooting out any kind of inefficiencies in a system. Uh, and, the, and, he, and he was saying that the SDPs would do it quicker and the NTJs would think more about the unintended consequences of like getting rid of useless people from an, or less less efficient people from an organization um and so maybe the ntjs are thinking about how could we get sued here yeah. <laughs> and that's definitely a thing these days where it's it, and, and because it is so difficult to get rid of people it makes it harder to hire people because you have to think about well this person you have to, so the person has to be really good for you to take a risk on hiring them because if they because if it's somebody who's a bit iffy and might not work out they might think oh it's going to be difficult to get rid of this person with these employment laws we have so that's the that's the other side of the coin uh it's hard to get fired but it's harder to get hired right can be good at debugging organizational systems right so the next one will be i think it's a bit more on the ti and uh yeah victor on victor on the ti about the different kinds of it. Oh yeah, and then I'll just put a bit in there about TE. 
because I just left that bit in there about just thought I'd leave that in there to entertain people. So I'll let you both look through that. Um, I, if you should I read it, I'll read it through as well in case Haley can't see it. And because I do look through my analytics and there are people watching on little mobile devices. So um, I'll just say that bit about TE because I think it's quite funny. So if we consider the example of LII, TINX, they may know a lot about business logic, but they're not very enterprising by nature. So I, I got all Peter Schiff on my wall and, and I know all the economics, but you know, I'm not a CEO. <laughs> right. BG on TI. The last thing we'll talk about is structural. Logic. Oh, yes. And all of these notes come from uh, this, uh, this particular hangout here that we did with Victor on the functions. There. So it's number seven. There we go. Uh, Galenko number seven, rather. Structural logic. Uh, right. I'm going to read through this. Structural logic. So the two different kinds of the TI. I have myself suggested two versions of the name for this positive structural logic. Yeah, this for this hangout, we were talking a lot about how to name uh, the functions, what to call them in English. And what, and I actually cropped this down, and the bit I cropped out right at the start, I asked Victor what he thought of Dario's definitions of the functions, and he said that a lot of Dario's definitions were very similar to his own. I can, I can show you that in future. Uh, so the plus sign, so this is what we relate to today, stands for addition. So when we add, we build a structure. I mean, in structural terms, addition is construction. So the LSI, um, it, not quite ISTP, it's a sort of a mix between ISTP and ISTJ, is typically like the type of best in practice. Um, and then this is to contrast that this is my kind of TI and Victor's kind and David Kersey's kind, senior and junior and Linda Barron's. The negative structural logic is the logic of analysis rather than combining and building. Interestingly enough, INTJ and ISTP are enterprises in Kersey, and enterprises are about looking for options to advance, and INTPs are inquirers, and they're looking for information. So um, the negative structural logic is the logic of analysis rather than combining and building. So the LSI, he builds a successful structure. He will consider it like if it works, he considers it correct and one doesn't deviate from it. And of course, uh, ILI has this as well, this strong TI plus in a creative position. But if we consider the LII, uh, any type, they tend to see different facets of the same function. And then he talks about Linda Behrens' website and a graphic about looking at something from different angles. And this is something that, Sana doesn't agree with what we do uh, about it. About um, and then this thing about projections. And then they give this example of a cylinder. If you look at a cylinder from end on, you see a circle. If you see it from a side, you see a rectangle. But you combine those points of view, and you see it's a cylinder. Um, right. And then, then it talks about this is what the LII does with various theories, especially in. Um, uh, typology and so we like to combine different angles so I might look at say from a Kersey angle from a socionics angle from an Enneagram angle where Asana would say and she says she's actually picked this up from the LSI no you've got to keep these systems completely separate you mustn't mix because people will get confused and you need to be more pedantic man and precise because you get sloppy and you don't mention which system you're using when you're talking in these generalities so that's it's a little so that's a little summary of all the con of the conversations we have. That's the theme, <laughs> right? Um, multifaceted logic with negative sign. Uh, that's the stuff about the cylinder. Uh, here we go. So it's not uniform logic. It's fractal logic, fragmented. So this fragmented, multi-level way of thinking is often not accepted by others. <laughs> um, so LII is often misunderstood. That's because you don't explain everything. <laughs> it takes a lot of time to explain all the factors. Yeah, well, don't be surprised when people don't get it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Could you just say which book it is of Linda's? And then he says that it was from a website. And then Victor actually had the same thing with the cylinder from different angles. Um, 
Linda Barrett is a very clear example of this kind of logic. I can give you an example of, and then he talks about how e SLE, ESTP, uh, so somebody like Pattern, that they'll look at a situation from different angles, but on a tactical level rather than a strategic level. Uh, I can give you the example of SLE, ESTP, who also has fractal logic and can tell you how it works for him. Because also the form of cognition is the same, holographic panoramic, and they've got demonstrative TI minus. And Dario said that ESTP is very good at deduction. Um, it's not quite similar to deduction, but I'm just putting that in there. Uh, fractal logic can tell you, I can give you an example of the STP and how the fractal logic works for them. Let's take a look at SLE uh, on the battlefield. SLE commander looks at three projections, front, side, rear, and then he sort of puts it all together and to get the whole picture. Uh, there's a bit here. We don't want to talk about the NE afterwards because I'm going to get on to Dario's thing. Idea of these three projections will not make it. And then I ask about Zukov in the Battle of Kursk. And he said that, oh, Zukov always followed those, uh, had those plans. And he had also had to follow Stalin so he didn't get killed. Because um, Stalin was a little bit hardcore. Um, so that's that event. Oh, this is the bit on the NE, which is slight. It sounds a little bit like the TI minus. And so he says here, and because we were, again, we were talking about the names of the functions. <laughs> <laughs> which bit are you laughing at, Haley? <laughs> His comment about you. Yes. Yeah. It never stops. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and then again, he's putting a dig in. <laughs> this is by Maria, though. So traditional socionics usually attracts people with intuition and perspectives. So that's the ENTPs. They saw the system, they liked it, and they're not looking for anything else. <laughs> so they just stick to that. Um, so the people, the types with intuition of alternatives. So you've got uh, LII with the intuition of alternatives and the fractal TI, looking at things from different angles. The types with intuition of alternatives usually juggle several systems, try to compare them and consider them facets of a huge Uber system. Um, so if we compare people with types LII and ILI, the humanitarian socionics, Victor School, which are built by taking from different systems, they attract LII types who this approach is natural for. And the ILI tend to take one system and criticize the rest <laughs> so that it doesn't sit well with them. Um, so both intuitions are equally important for society. And then they're, they're okay, folks, you've probably seen it in this hangout where I've talked about Kersey, Dario Nardi, and Socianica, so multiple angles on a greater truth. So that's that bit. And we've mentioned this before. And then here is Victor putting the digs in again <laughs> about TI+. Plus. This is functional socionics, <laughs> unlike the original socionics with its rigid structural approach. <laughs> I love it how he puts these digs in. Oh, yeah, and you might like this, Hayley. Let's see if you relate to this from uh, George Patton. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, if everyone thinks the NASM is great, then people aren't thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of another one I'm not sure if I have it spot on but it's something like if your opinion is that of everyone else's you might want to rethink it yeah <laughs> I mean th these are like quotes that can really like are emblematic of INTJ and ILI <laughs> it's like they're going to think for themselves and not care what other people think because they're not as smart as us <laughs> they're not thought it through and concentrated on, this, on it the way we have um then we've got, so this is a bit about the Beeb model. And the reason I'm going to talk about this is that, and we're going to conclude with going through what Dario wrote about the creative function, what he calls the sixth function. So I'm just explaining here why it's called the sixth function. So the Beeb model, it's basically just underneath all of the, um, well, you've got these valued ones from the normal MBTI. So if I had to got NIT, FISE, the standard stack that people talk about on YouTube. And then these ones are just under it. So like, there's the fourth, there's the fifth, and there's the sixth, because it comes directly under the, so you've got N-I, N-E, T-E, D-I, F-I, F-E, S-I, S-E. So it just goes, it's a very simple model, which organized in a very simple way. And so the sixth function is called the which, so stroke, Senex. 
And so now, and so we're not going to talk about loads about the beard model. What we're going to talk about is what Dario wrote about how he uses TI. And because this was published in a bulletin in 2005, and I think he said before that I can share it around, this is a Hangout exclusive. So, Sana, do you want to read this out? You have a nice voice. What, the whole thing? Yes, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. In stories like Star Wars, the hero or heroine often encounters a dark parent figure called a Senex, male or witch, female. In the first Star Wars, Luke Skywalker loses a kindly father figure, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and must face a dangerous father figure, Darth Vader. Usually, the dark figure is unmasked through a redemptive process where both parties learn a deep lesson and gain wisdom. Similarly, John Beeb, is that how you pronounce yep. it? Yep, Beeb. Proposes that among young A functions, a person's sixth function is carried by the Senex switch archetype. In youth, we often experience this function as a dark and stern obstacle to our dominant function. But with maturity, we may embrace it to, great, to greatly enrich our lives. My type is INTJ, and during my college years, I really disliked the use of my sixth function, introverted thinking. I recall a physics professor, likely an INTP, who would present a smattering of core principles and then expect me to somehow come up with any and all solutions to novel problems on exams. I cursed him for the lack of examples or step-by-step -step methods. Later, during graduate school, I worked under an older INTJ and also an INTP, and I learned the advantage of clear, coherent principles. My INTJ advisor was a role model for how to express this function, and the INTP was someone to practice with. Type knowledge was also useful. Sometimes I meet INTJs who reject introverted thinking. Their ideas tend to be inco incoherent, such as using 10 different models, none of which fit together. Type research suggests that many people use their sixth function. Steve Myers observed this when developing the MTR I, whatever that is, uh, I have observed the same pattern while creating the interstrength cognitive assessment. Uh, along, along with one's dominant auxiliary, people often report using the sixth function, function as much as their tertiary and more than the remaining ones. Yeah, I'll just say that the interstrength cognitive assessment is their sort of their equivalent of the MBTI as like an inventory asking questions so like i said Darren's and nardi they're not using mbti to determine someone's type they're using temperament interaction style and uh this interstrength cognitive assessment and then self-discovery process where they give a few profiles to people and ask them to really look at them and, and as a whole and think which one they more closely resemble so it's like people get to their type through about four different angles there to triangulate their type well quadrangulate i suppose if it's four different angles so yeah um i say and then we've got what does this all mean oh wait a minute wait a minute and then i got it okay here we go what does all this all mean here are six examples that demonstrate how accepting the sixth function can make a difference in a person's lives you can read all about 16 types at there's another one of Dario's websites cognitiveprocesses.com there we go cognitiveprocesses.com it might not exist this is 2005 so it gives you an idea of how long dario has been at this game so i'll, I'll let you read that sana okay um the uh te one yeah the, yeah when ESTPs and ENTPs are uncomfortable with this process, they may rebel against structure and time constraints or validation of ideas using logical reasoning based on measurable evidence. An ENTP researcher might reject an empirical study because results might limit the numerous hypotheses and ideas suggested by his imagination, or dominant extroverted intuiting. Or an ESTP might try to throw off her company's decision-making hierarchy because it slows down the pursuit of options in the moment, dominant extroverted sensing. In contrast, when ESTPs and ENTPs embrace this process, they often utilize to-do lists and often uh, other life structuring devices to effectively engage more interests and activities. 
An ESTP might juggle work, a side career, book projects, travel, and staying in touch with friends and family by embracing a daily scheduler. Or an ENTP, ENTP might find that mobilizing the structure of a company allows him to better engage a dream, such as launching a new pro product into the marketplace. All right. So I'll just ask you, sir, do you think that's true? Do you think what Dario has written there is pretty accurate? And also themes which have come up in Socionics as well. Um, asking me? Yeah. Well, I, I just have one ENTP to speak. Right, okay. Um, and I've never known him to not be good at this stuff, so right. it's hard to compare. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he is one of those examples of like what Kretschmer would have called a plus variance, like a super example of the type. Like, just like Wojtek and Kersey Jr. are like well developed examples of INTP. I'll call them the super INTPs, the ones that actually know about maths and physics and like have done it to, you know, like a master's degree standard or a PhD standard. All right, here we go for, I'll, I'll read this one out for the SE and then. Uh, uh, so we've got here, when ESFJs and ESTJs are uncomfortable with this process, they often discourage expression of impulses or indulge in the senses and may use facts to block action, actions proposed by others. An ESTJ teacher might insist her kids sit still and will discount their inclination to be physically active. She might draw upon her dominant function, extroverted thinking, to argue that kids should learn to focus and restrain themselves in order to achieve class goals. Or an ESFJ might decide that physical intimacy before impending marriage would be wrong because it would hinder the genuine emotional in intimacy he so values. I think maybe you go into a little bit of a stereotype there, but you can see there, Sana, the, the power sensing in the ESTJ. Those things there. Um, and then in contrast, uh, Hey, did you know an ESFJ? I don't think I do. Yeah, but I think that may have gone a little bit into the stereotype there. Because it's whatever is the convention for the SJ. I mean, when it's I mean, this is 2005, and actually I actually looked at um a poll. I actually got it from Fox News, and it was about people's changing attitudes towards what they used to call illegitimacy. So whether a child was born out of wedlock. And from about 2002 to about 2014, it really crossed over and the attitudes had really changed. So um, that might be something there. Like this written in 2005. And even that might not be true. I mean, it, it's whatever is conventional for. I mean, certainly that would have been the case, say, 100 years ago with the SJs. So the SJs are not necessarily old fashioned, it's just they are conventional, whatever the convention is in their subculture. Um, in contrast, ESTJs and ESFJs embrace this project. Oh, so, sorry. In contrast, when ESTJs and ESFJs embrace this project process, they are freer with physical expression and gut reactions. An ESTJ athlete might learn to let go and trust his instincts when playing a competitive sport, enhancing performance and achievement. Or an ESFJ might embrace a health regimen to experience more energy with the freedom to engage activities with friends and kids, thus enriching her relationships. What I would say from Victor's point of view, use the socionics definition of SE, I would say is this is when an ESFJ knows when to say no and to stand up to themselves and not be so accommodating to other people's needs and to not be like an unhealthy Enneagram too but to only help people when they sort of like want to rather than being like seeing it as a a slave of duty so being able to stand up for themselves a bit more i would say and not being sort of like a social robot does that does that make sense Anna? what i sort of would say that so yeah. maybe say about like get some extra bit sensing in the sfj and of course and i've explained before when they use too much extroverted sensing in the wrong way, then they can be pushy, overbearing, and too controlling of their kids, as an example. Um, next one we got here. I'll let you read this one now. Sana, INTP and INFP. When INTP and INFP are uncomfortable with this process, they may wonder 
between in interests and put off plans because they lack a positive, positive vision of the future or they may be distressed by a focus on the supernatural. An INFP might put off a career change because she keeps envisioning how one aspect of her future work might create a moral conflict, dominant introverted feeling. Or an INTP scientist might categorize inquiry into ESP as little more than a humorous diversion that distracts from rigorous investigation of scientific principles, dominant intro introverted thinking. I'll just, say that, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just to say that uh, some people out there might not know what ESP is. It's the thing that used to be, it's not really used a lot, that term anymore, but it's extra sensory perception. It's like the NI superpowers that, yeah. <laughs> that Santa dislikes. And, you know. Yeah, all that, yeah, all that ESP stuff. In contrast to when INTPs and INFPs embrace this process, they often discover energy and purpose around a vision of change. An INFP psychologist might foresee how a particular model could help millions of people if he published a book about it. He radiates an excitement in workshops and conferences that gets others interested in that vision. Or an INTP might have a mystical experience with an animal totem which allows her to focus her thoughts and refine her work to a new level of understanding. Yeah, you see, Dario can get a bit of NI. He can get a little bit of that nf -y kind of NI that even you, Santa, might be thinking, that's a little bit too nf -y even for me. But, I yeah, was going to ask what your animal totem is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that kind of stuff really does make me roll my eyes. And uh... <laughs> Right, OK, Jung's uh, sixth function, I'll do this next bit uh what we got there ah right so this is him writing about um this is where him thinking that carl jung was uh intp but just with a ton of ni and it, it's very close with him i can see the intp nature in that it's all it's all a system and it all fits together and then all the stuff that he mentions from flood big he, and and then you said i think you what did you say about carl jung and about the way he works with people I think Me? you said something about him being uncomfortable with people. Well, the, well, I showed you the I showed you the clip where he said that he wasn't very comfortable with, with feeling stuff. Ah, okay, fair enough. Right, so I'll read through this. Uh, a long-standing question is Carl Jung's four-letter type code. Jung stated he was an introvert who preferred thinking, but after his break with his Senex-like figure Freud, he came to engage more in the intuitive. Was this introverted or extroverted intuiting? Jung said that a person's auxiliary function would not compete with his or her dominant function and would be different in every way. This matches Isabel Myers, and I've done a hangout with this. See the ENFP one with Carol Linden on demonstrative FI, where I actually proved that when Carl Jung talked about the auxiliary function, he never actually named it. He only said things like, practical thinking with sensation and then when he got to intj he never said philosophical intuition with practical thinking he just said philosophical intuition aided by a powerful intellect so that it could cover both the te base and the ti base and in a lot of those examples where he gave examples of the 16 types he when he mentioned the second function it covered both what we would call the creative and the demonstrated so it's almost like Carl Jung was hedging his bets there so and then I think Socionics went a little bit too far when I looked at it on wiki Socion and it said that Carl Jung mentioned that there were two auxiliary functions well he did quite say that no not not in that bit and not in psychological types but he did say that bit that I it's, and I've shown that in another hangout so folks if you watch that the FI Hangout, Demonstrative FI in the ENFP, Model G Hangouts with Carol Linden. Uh, so, more intuitive. He was introverted. In, was he introverted or extroverted intuiting? Jung said that a person's auxiliary function would not compete with his or her dominant function and would be different in every way. Psychological types, paragraph 669. Oh, yes, and that's in the same bit as when he talks about, when he lists what some of the 16 types would be and when he says something like speculative thinking oh yeah this is how he describes intp speculative thinking forging ahead with intuition doesn't say what kind of intuition it just says speculative thinking forging ahead with intuition uh what have we got here um oh yeah lenore thompson carol knows lenore thompson 
Uh, maybe we, we can get a hangout with her in future. These things can happen. Uh, this uh, this matches Isabel Meyer's presentation at the types. 16 types suggest that Jung was INTP. Okay. Okay. However, as Lenore Thompson described to me, those who knew Jung say differently. His break with Freud helped him discover his true self and introverted intuitive. In either case, Jung used both introverted intuiting and introverted thinking. His lifelong work focused on symbols and archetypes as part of a grand theoretical framework of the psyche. Maybe it was the synergy between these two functions that produced a body of wisdom to inspire and light a path for so many. The role of the sixth function is yet another area begging for more research. Even though this is a long, challenging process, it is like the student who goes to a martial arts master excited by the thought, the way. However, the new master is harsh and the student is quickly angry and discouraged. Yes, over time, the student learns to understand the master and discovers wisdom. Uh, so what do, you, what do you think of that, Sang? I think you've looked at it before, but... Um... Well, yeah. Well, this, this particular theory is a little bit difficult for me because I don't know which type I should be reading about. Yeah, but I do yeah. know that I'm comfortable with both NI and if I'm both systems, in every yeah. system, really. Yeah, I, I, do, I do think the way that Dario sees it and looking at his books, there's a lot of, like I said, unless we're talking about logical sensory introverts, inspector, or sensory logical introvert, master, or ethical sensory introvert, guardian, those three types in Victor's system, the other ones match up okay, in my opinion. But that's with different debate. So yeah, these are the things he, as people say, these are the ones he referenced. So people can look at those. And I've actually got that book, but I've not read it. Like so many of my type books, I've not read it. But I do have it. Lenore Thompson's book, Personality Type and Own Owner's Manual. Um, there's actually some stuff in there that's a little bit NI. A little bit weird. But, you know, good weird. Uh, oh, okay, these are the things I mentioned I want to remind people of. Of the non-type factors making up somebody's personality. So we have, uh, and I just did it with a K to help remember it. So culture with a K, individual social status, biology, relationships, upbringing, culture, education, career, and all have a bearing on someone's personality. This is about types and patterns. So Linda Behrens would say, somebody wouldn't say, oh, you're an INTP. You say, no, your best fit type pattern is INTP, or you have INTP preferences, something like that. And then Santa might say, oh, that, that JP problem there. <laughs> right. In terms of their external or lack of organization, they are a P. Right, so I'll read this out, folks. Oh, yeah, definitely. When I suggested that maybe this should be called patterns rather than types, Carol said, and then I've asked her if I can show this to people. Oh, yeah, they're definitely patterns, I guess. Thinking of a type description as a description of a pattern, not a label or a box, but a pattern with which you can have varying degrees of fit. We're just looking for best fit. People are too complex and their developed selves are too important for anyone to fit into a box. That's an unfortunate thing about psychological type. Isabel never meant it to be about labeling people or putting them in a box. When it's presented, shall we say, less skillfully, it can unfortunately have that effect on people, which makes me sad because I've also seen how it can open people's eyes and make them feel seen for who they are for the first time in their lives. If they're saying that, they're probably an F as well. <laughs> You're making me feel seen for the first time in my life. Well, okay, that's extra evidence. You might, you might resemble an NF there if you're putting things in those terms. These are the socion more things on Socionics. This is on Wikisocion. And I have slightly altered this to change temperament to mindsets and to make this Big P low and to make these lowercase because temperaments are owned by Kersey. He was a war hero and he owns the temperaments, in my opinion. <laughs> and 1978, please understand me, before Socionics, just a little bit before. And so this is how the graphics were originally done. And there, and now you can see how I originally cannot spell halt. <laughs> That's how um, somebody translated the break function, they just translated it to halt. 
And then this is how, if you want to know how to work out Model G in an INTP way, then that's how you do it. And I'll just uh, pause it there. You can pause it there. Use your brain. Uh, and I'll put it up there. And then these are the various ways of building up. The, and actually, this is building up INFJ. So the various ways to build up the model of INFJ. Well, you know that NI is leading, and you know that this is the um, manipulative function, so it's going to be the dual function, so that's going to be SE. And then you know that this one, when it's ascending arrow, it's a mirror function, so it's going to be SI. And also because it's the roll function, you know it's of the same temperament as NI, that temperament being, um, sorry, mindset. Um, what's he call it? He calls it... Um, receptive adaptive and so the other receptive adaptive function is si so that means you've got the ni the se and the si this one's going to be another dual function so that's going to be ne and that's also going to be the opposite vertex of the first one so that means you've got these ones in and then when you've got the fe there then you know what's going to be there because it's an up arrow so it's going to be of the opposite vertex so you've got fi it's a down arrow so you know it's going to be a tandem function so you know it's te and then you go up again so you know it's going to be a uh, opposite vertness ti there you go so that's how you can work it out and then these just to finish on this people can do different kinds of intelligence and the functions the cognitive faculties have some relationship with these so with the linguistic ones the nfs tend to have good linguistic intelligence the nts tend to be good logico mathematical intelligence because they practice it more and also some sts as well especially as Santa said there that the lsi will be good at this as well and in fact i believe Santa said to me that the person with the highest m the highest mensa iq uh his type is probably i think i look for this that his type is probably lsi i think his name is chris langham or something uh uh lsi and probably and i think LSI type in uh, socionics, bodily kinesthetic. Usually, you skipped SP one. I skipped one. Visual spatial. And again, you don't have to be an artisan to be good at visual spatial. You can be like Sano and Maria, uh, good at art. And then also, who else? And it's also arguably you could say really strong role function. Or also, you could say uh, there's the woman that. We did a hangout with an Enneagram 5 hangout with, even though um, she's probably Enneagram 4, but she thought she was 5 at the time. So visual spatial, usually the the sensing types are best at this, usually. But, you know, people can enact different roles and be good at different things. So the INFJs, probably with the INFJs is they get into this because they, they've, they're seeing these things in their mind and they want to express it. So I'll say there, NI and FE. Right. Bodily kinesthetic, again, very SP ish, but I would also say some NE DOMs as well, but just not going to be as good. But the SP is going to be best at this, especially the SE DOMs with the sensing and the externally directed, and of course, musicals separate. Interpersonal, again, very FE related. Also, arguably FI in some people with the, I suppose, interpersonal on a sort of one to one level with the ethics of relations because ESTPs and ENTPs can balls that up with the interpersonal, especially one-on-one -on -one close relationships. So you can say that FI is intrapersonal, but it's also a bit of the interpersonal in the close relationships. You think that's fair to say, Sana? Yeah, it depends on the system, but yeah, yeah I would say that it, probably correlates with both of them yeah i think mbti might be a bit more intrapersonal is fi yeah it's about definitely. Really and interpersonal is the fe whereas uh certainly uh the socionics ethics of relations and if you want to see a hangout on this folks just type in socionics r and it will come up compared with dario nardi fi and it's one of the and this, the thumbnail is a picture of uh senna and uh probably dario's inventory on their left and it's a, a recent hangout that was done in about the past three months 
so there we go and i think that is the last one. Oh yes and we and we can end on this joke of people who type themselves as n look oh, mom and mbti oh god oh. <laughs> don't this take my, it uh, my my problem uh, yeah comic form you believe you're a genius even though you're mediocre I might have added something in there about who are you calling mediator you're supposed to be a mother <laughs> what kind of mother are you but anyway getting back on track I'm an intuitive mom I'll remember that comment about mediocre <laughs> no, no. yeah this is the uh, intuitive bias oh massive intuitive bias and what you tend to get in sociology is you can get the alpha quadra uh, bias a little bit but it's nowhere near like this it's just because the system itself is very alpha yeah but kersey though i mean he does um talk a lot about um so i'm gonna give so there we go folks is it i i readjusted the the foot the, so it's not cut off by the boxes links in notes uh so that some books for you so the books that meant dario mentioned and it's not strictly related to socionics, but these people are interested in types who we've got here. This is the book you mentioned with the Lenore Thompson book. This is apparently a hard book. Uh, there's a website that was created for people to discuss the meaning of this book. So we'll try and it would be we might have a hangout with her in future. It, it is a possibility because Dario and Carol know her. So it is a possible that these things can happen. Right. And then also I think that's pretty much it. So this is goodbye from me and bye. Bye from Santa. <laughs>